Today in Questions That Matter, we're asking, has the church replaced Israel in God's economy? Here's John Ecob from the Herald of Hope. The church is not Israel. Uh, the Bible very clearly distinguishes. You see, on the day of Pentecost, the church gathered and began and the Holy Spirit was given. The apostles were told to go to Jerusalem and to tarry until the Holy Spirit was given. That he, Jesus had promised him, the Father had promised him, and uh, they were to tarry there until the Holy Spirit came upon them. And the new covenant was established at Pentecost. And uh, there at the day of Pentecost, a remarkable thing happened. Uh, the disciples, who had always preached in Hebrew, the Old Testament scriptures were all in Hebrew, and uh, they never preached in Gentile languages. And yet on the day of Pentecost, they began to preach in languages that they had never spoken before. About 15 languages of nations, Gentile languages, were spoken by the apostles that day. And uh, there were Jewish proselytes there who had come up to the Feast of Pentecost. Uh, these were Gentiles who had become Jewish believers. And uh, they, of course, had their own Gentile languages. And when the apostles began to preach in Gentile languages, of course, they understood. And they were amazed. They said, what's happening? What's this all about? And so this was a sign to the nation of Israel that God was putting the nation aside and he was turning to the church, which would be a Gentile bride of Christ. And... Um, what God did to Israel, because Israel rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, God blinded the nation. And we read about that in the epistle of Paul to the Romans. Uh, he quotes David's prayer. Uh, David prayed, let their table, that is Israel's table, be made a snare, a trap, a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather that through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So what he's saying is that God blinded them. They were scattered. Jesus said that the Romans would come, they would destroy Jerusalem and the Jews would be scattered amongst the nations and they would continue to be scattered among the nations. But here Paul is saying that God has turned to the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy so that they then one day will turn to the Lord. And over in chapter 11 of Romans uh, and in verse uh, 25, he says, I would not, brethren that you should be ignorant of this mystery. He says, lest you should be wise in your own conceits. You see, the Gentiles could be very proud that God had put the Jews aside and God had turned to the Gentiles and they could be saying, well, you know, we're special people and God has finished with the Jews, therefore we are better than the Jews. But what he's saying is, lest you be uh, puffed up in your own conceits. He says, I'll tell you the truth. Brethren, be not ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. So there is a terminus point in Israel's blindness and the church is going to fill the gap up to that point of terminus. And then we read in verse 26, and so all Israel shall be saved. And it goes on to speak about the new covenant that God would make with the nation of Israel. He says, There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And this is my covenant unto them, Israel, when I shall take away their sins. So there's coming a day when God is going to take away the sins of Israel. And concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, that is now, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. God doesn't change his mind. God promised to Abraham that in his seed 
all the families of the earth would be blessed. And that promise was an unconditional covenant that he made with Abraham and Abraham's seed. And therefore, God has to keep his word. And so we have very simply here that Israel rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. God put them aside. God blinded them and they have been scattered among the nations. In fact, he says that they are like a branch plucked out, the olive branch, the natural olive branch, the symbol of Israel, plucked out, and the Gentiles, the wild olive branch, grafted in their place. But the time is coming when God is going to graft the natural olive branches back in the olive tree again. Israel will be reinstated, but Israel has to turn to the Lord Jesus first. And that will happen during the Great Tribulation. After the church has been raptured, after the church has been caught away, then the Great Tribulation will take place and the 144,000 Jewish men will turn to Christ and preach the gospel of the kingdom in all the world. And as a result of their preaching and the Russian invasion and the Muslim invasion uh, described in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, Joel chapter 2, Israel will repent and turn to Jesus Christ. And that conversion of Israel will enable the world to be blessed through Abraham's seed. And so we have here the history of Israel. They rejected Christ. They are blinded. But it's only until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. The fullness of the Gentiles is the rapture of the church. When the church is complete and raptured home, then all Israel will turn to Christ and be saved. <laughs> 